French, American, and global culture will come together in a concert wrapping up the residency by the Eche Ensemble in Cambridge at Le Laboratoire. To tell us about the performance on May 19th is the Ensemble's executive director and composer of one of the works in the program, John Aylward. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, John. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, talk about this whole uh, project that you've had at Le Laboratoire. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. It's been a great um, experience. We've been an ensemble in residence there I suppose now for two full years, at the end of our second season there. And um, the mission really as an ensemble in residence has been to enliven the gallery space, to interact with the installations and to create programming that um, not only um, develops the installation in some way, but also uh, creates a kind of uh, uh, vital space for uh, a vital venue uh, for performance in the gallery. Well, this is a program that uh, it sort of unites the American and French mm -hmm. elements. The French element here is mainly uh, the composer Philippe Hurel. Yeah. Talk about uh, his work. So I worked with Philippe Hurel a few years ago at the Etchings Festival, which is a festival that we, uh, the Etche, uh, directs in France. It's a kind of summer academy in, uh, near Toulouse. And our time there in 2012 was with Philippe. He was one of our guest uh, composers. We got to know his, his work very well. Um, I taught alongside him, found him to be a great colleague. Um, and we kept track of his music since then. So we put in a grant application with the lab uh, for this season to do a series of concerts. Uh, the grant was with the French American Cultural Exchange, and it was to do a series of concerts that would engage French and American dialogue, French and American music in dialogue. And our first uh, concert was um, the music of Jean-Baptiste Berrier, uh, who is a French composer living in America. Frank Bedrosian, our second uh, portrait concert, uh, a French composer living in America. And so now, this third time, uh, working with a French composer in France and then complementing it with American music. Well, uh, how would you describe his music? I mean, he's been compared to uh, Ligeti. He died a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Ligeti was, his, he was part Europe, part African, mm -hmm. and, and, and there mm -hmm. was just this personality, this sort of mm -hmm. almost capricious, whimsical right. part of it. Yeah, yeah you know, Hirol's music is um, one of the, it, it's, it's very lively music. It's definitely rooted in a spectral tradition, which is a tradition that is very, foc very much focused on uh, development of harmony. But I would say that there's quite a lot of uh, rhythmic energy in Hirel's music, and I think that rhythmic energy is a commentary on uh, American jazz, on African rhythmic systems, and on a kind of internationalism. It gives his music uh, a, 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 a perhaps a more kind of uh, in international feeling. This is BNN News, and we're talking with John Aylward from Eche Ensemble. Uh, John, your own work in the program. Tell us about that. Well, I've been really excited to develop this work with Eche and to have it on um, the program May 19th uh, in contrast with Philippe Hurel's work. I really admire Philippe Hurel's music so much and the opportunity to have something in contrast, uh, in, 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 um, in complement to his work is, is, is an honor. And the work that we've been developing is uh, a piece called Angelus Novus, which is based on the Paul Clay painting. And um, um, it's a work for a soprano, dancer, and ensemble. It's a piece in nine movements uh, based on a pastiche text that really is centered around um, a text by Walter Benjamin, um, uh, a, a philosopher and writer who knew Paul Clay and who actually purchased Paul Clay's Angelus Novus and wrote about the painting. So I take excerpts of Benjamin's writing about Clay's Angelus Novus and from there develop a kind of musical portrait of the piece. Now, you have just won a, a Guggenheim Fellowship and I guess that means you get some more work to do involving this piece too, right? Yeah, the, the Guggenheim Fellowship is gonna allow me to take this unstaged version. We do have uh, Colin Gee, uh, who's uh, choreographed uh, the, the performance on May 19th. Uh, a tremendous artist to be working with. I'm really excited to be, to be working with Colin. He is, um, he's, uh, 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 he's been 
such a joy to work with, and I've discovered so many things about the piece by working with him. And I think you 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 wish that for every collaborator that you that you have that they help you understand your own work better. Um, and with the Guggenheim uh, Foundation uh, support, we're going to be able to um, continue to develop Angelus Novus into a, a, a ballet. Um, we'll continue. Colin and I will continue working on. Um, uh, adding dancers, and I hope taking some of the instrumentalists off book uh, so that they'll be able to memorize their work in subsequent performances and we'll be able to even choreograph the, um, uh, the musicians. An important part of uh, all this and bringing it off is, is the setting where this is played, the experience. Talk about Le Laboratoire. Well, it's, a, it's such an opportunity to work there. It's been a great experience to curate and program concerts there, but also to be able to workshop my own works there. I think composers need opportunities to flesh things out. They need performances where they can take risks, um, where the venue is open to um, uh, edgy programming. Um, I'm really happy to be able to um, use the space to, to develop my own work. So it has played a role. I, I, premiered an opera there last season. Uh, we curated an entire season and I was, I was very, I was really honored to be able to have an opera performance there. Again, not a typical opera venue, but in a landscape where it's hard to produce contemporary opera, the lab was very open to it and very supportive. And here again, they're very supportive of the development of this work. So I, I'm really happy to be able to not only grow my own work there, but also to curate and program works in the gallery that allow other composers to experience that and um, other commissions that take risks in that space as well. You mentioned it's going to be on May 19th mm -hmm. and you've got a website I think with some more details about the uh, etchearts.com. Great, thank you very much for being with us. You bet, thank you. Johnny Elward from the Etche Ensemble.